All right, we're a little past the hour. Why don't we get started? Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our live Q&A expert panel, Cyber Liability Insurance for At-Risk Industries. My name is Richie Venner, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Distinguished Programs. I work across the business with different teams, and Cyber Liability team is one of my favorites. Uh, they've got a fast-growing program, an excellent service that they offer to brokers. It's, it's really, it's a great team. Uh, just a note, we will send all registrants a copy of the slides, the webinar recording, and a PDF with the questions and answers from today's session. If anyone has a question during the presentation, please use the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. Distinguished Programs is a leading national insurance program manager, providing specialized insurance for hotels, restaurants, community associations, and real estate. In addition, we recently added two new programs to Distinguished. The first, which will start writing business in April, focuses on fine art and collectibles. The second new program, which is writing business now, focuses on environmental and construction pollution insurance. More information on these programs can be found on the Distinguished website. But today, we're here and excited to speak with our cyber liability experts. Joining us today are Haley Cagle. Haley joined Distinguished in January 2022 as the new cyber product manager. She previously worked as a program manager for Lloyd's of London and has been in the professional liability insurance industry as both a wholesale surplus lines broker and as an underwriter for 14 years. She specializes in cyber, tech, and miscellaneous e &O. Also joining us is Alex Montclair. Alex joined Distinguished this year in January of 2023 as a business development manager responsible for the growth of cyber, restaurants, and hotel primary insurance. Alex has 10 years of industry experience, including surplus lines brokerage and leadership at a national MGA. Uh, to ground the conversation, let's quickly run through some of our cyber liability insurance program basics before we get to the attendee questions. So I'm going to address this first question to Haley. Haley, what is cyber liability insurance? Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so what is cyber liability insurance? Uh, cyber liability insurance is designed to protect businesses from the cost of cyber threats and breaches. Um, it provides insurance coverage for things like lawsuits due to stolen records, um, the cost of notifying affected parties, and potentially the PR cost of reassuring visitors that their data is safe in your hands. Uh, cyber insurance also kicks in when an attack freezes a company's systems. Um, this includes the cost of responding to the cyber interruption and the lost profits due to system failure. So Haley, you know, it, it's such a broad type of coverage. Who typically purchases cyber liability insurance? You know, anybody really that has a digital presence should be purchasing cyber insurance, um, even if, you know, you're only accepting credit cards, um, you know, but if you have any kind of customer inf information that you're holding, you really need to be purchasing uh, cyber liability coverage. Um, our cyber product caters to community associations, hotels, and restaurants. So, you know, compared to the other industries like finance, um, you know, these industries are a lot less likely to have robust security protocols. Um, so, you know, this really makes these industries uh, a big target for cyber criminals. That, that makes sense. That makes sense why, why we're doing it, because we specialize in those areas. <laughs> I, you know, one thing I, I know that uh, people always ask about this product is who is the carrier and where is this product available? Uh, Haley, if you could answer that for us. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, our coverage is provided by Beasley. Um, who is an industry leader in cyber liability coverage. Um, we're in all 50 states, um, and our cyber coverage is available monoline only, but uh, Distinguished does offer several other complimentary coverages to meet all your hotel, restaurant, and community association needs. Um, and if you, you know, would like to know uh, more information about those products, you can definitely reach out to us after this as well. Okay, all right. Thanks, Heather. You know, I'm going to switch this over to Alex for a second. Alex? Sometimes there's a lot of confusion on this. What does cyber liability insurance cover? At least our program, what does it cover? Well, you know, first of all, thanks, Richie, for inviting me to speak, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So what does cyber liability insurance cover? Compared to other kinds of insurance policies, there is more variation in the market on what is and isn't covered by a standard cyber package. Distinguishes coverage can help mitigate cyber attack costs, response costs, system costs, business interruption, media costs, and liability costs. It's important to note that we have notification costs, notification expense, excuse me, outside the limit. 
This is huge when you consider the average cost per record is around $150. In the event of a cyber attack, policyholders will also have access to a breach response team to help pinpoint where the system has been compromised and a 24 seven hotline for businesses to contact when they suspect a cyber incident has occurred. In that first initial moment of panic and probably sheer terror, these are your first responders to assist and coordinate a response. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. Um, you know, just as important though, what doesn't cyber liability insurance cover? So of course there are exclusions and cyber policies are, are no exception to that rule. There are three, basically three top exclusions that are, aren't covered under most cyber policies. Hacks by a foreign government or terrorists, betterments, so these are the costs of improving your cybersecurity system after a breach, and value lost due to intellectual property theft. Okay, that sounds pretty clear, Kai. Thank, thanks, Alex. Welcome. Hey, you know, Haley, I ask you this question as the program manager. How much does cyber liability cost? You know, uh, the cost of cyber liability premiums, they, they vary so much and, and they're just, just on the rise going up, up, up um, because the cyber attacks are just becoming more and more commonplace. So, I mean, it really varies, but I can tell you with our program, um, with our cyber liability coverage, uh, we offer really competitive uh, proprietary rates. Um, these are based on uh, revenues and, and it's annually starting at about $500 um, and we can offer limits up to 2 million. Oh, okay, great. I you talked about there's a lot of variance. What are some of the factors that determine cost? Right, so yeah, there's definitely a few factors that determine cost. Um, we're looking at things like uh, the policy details, like coverage amounts, like how much, you know, how many limits are you looking for? The revenues, um, current network security and risk factors, uh, what industry you're in, um, if you've had any claims in the past, and the types of data stored or the kind of information that you're keeping. Okay, all right, that, that, that's very helpful. You know, Alex, I've got a question for you. Just a, a little while ago, we talked about the different industries that we service with this product. But in particular, what's the importance of cyber insurance for hotels and restaurants? Sure. In the digital age, we are seeing more and more businesses report cyber attacks and data breaches. Businesses like restaurants and hotels deal with a large number of clients and often process payments through online portals or with credit and debit cards. According to IBM Security, the average price of a data breach for the hospitality industry is about $3.03 .03 million. So a good cyber insurance package can help mitigate cybersecurity risks and cover the costs of these attacks. Wow. I, you know, Alex, I know we also offer this for community associations. What are the particular risks for community associations? Sure, so community associations handle sensitive, personal, and financial information of their members and residents such as names, addresses, and bank account details. However, not all community associations have the tools to safeguard their data from a breach or hack. Cyber insurance can help protect the community association from financial loss, legal protection, and reputation management. Okay, great. All right, so now that we're through the basics, uh, we had quite a few brokers send us in questions ahead of time. And if you sent in the question, it doesn't sound exactly how you sent it in, it's because you got it more than once and we'll, we'll paraphrase it down. I, I'm gonna direct this first question to you, Alex. How can a an insurance broker successfully sell cyber liability insurance? What do they need to do? Yeah, so cyber, first of all, I want to say cyber, selling cyber, it's, it's, it's not as daunting as it might seem. Just go back to the basics that you might be using to sell property, general liability. So selling cyber insurance can be tricky though, but because cyber attacks are less obvious, it's important to not just sell the insurance itself, but explain what the risks are and how it can threaten your client's business. First, data is a helpful tool to make the case and convince your clients. For example, did you know the average data breach costs $4.24 million? Second, educate your clients on common risks associated with their business. Provide an outline of the different types of cyber attacks that are common today. Discuss the importance of a robust cybersecurity management system to protect their clients or members' data. And lastly, give your clients real life examples. Your clients should know that businesses just like them are being attacked every single day through examples that hit close to home. Okay. I, you know, Alex, is a all up to that. I'm going to direct this question to you also. Uh, as a broker, what should I consider when recommending a cyber liability insurance policy to my client, particularly when it comes to coverage limits and deductibles? Sure. Again, back to basics. When recommending a cyber liability insurance policy, brokers should consider the size and scope of their client's operations, their risk profile, and the potential for financial impact of a cyber incident. 
They should also review the policy language to understand the coverage limits and deductibles associated with each policy and recommend policies that are often the most comprehensive at an affordable price. Okay. I, Haley, I'm going to send this one to you. What types of cyber incidents are typically covered by cyber liability insurance policies? Okay, yeah, we, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but yeah, we're gonna definitely go more in depth on that. Um, so the cyber liability insurance policies provide for a range of cyber incidents. Um, malware, um, so if, if it causes a business interruption or a breach on your system, uh, ransomware, or what we call in our policy cyber extortion. Um, phishing, um, which a lot of people, um, you'll hear it also called social engineering. Um, and this is just a scam trying to get information or money. Uh, a denial of service attack, um, which uh, makes a network unavailable um, by disrupting your services. Um, and there's also business email compromise or BEC attacks. Um, and this is just another way to trick employees to send money or goods. Wow. I, you know, unfortunately, right, we see these sort of things every day. Um, all right, Haley, I get another question for you. Huh. Right, insurance is really only as good as the claim, right? That's the promise that we, right. we make to customers. How can I help my client navigate the claims process in the event of a cyber incident? And what should clients expect when filing a claim? Yeah, um, you know, all of our policyholders will receive a Beasley breach response information pack. Um, and that gives all of our pol policyholders information on how to con contact the 24 seven claims hotline to report a claim. Um, the Beasley breach response team also assists through all aspects of the incident, uh, including arranging legal computer expert services, assistance with notification processes, and offering credit monitoring products where needed. So the Beasley breach, re breach response team is really to help you every step of the way. Okay. All right, great. Uh, Alex, here's one for you. What are some of the emerging cyber risks faced by community associations, hotels, and restaurants, and how do I help my clients stay ahead of these risks? Sure. So emerging cyber risks faced by community associations, hotels, and restaurants may include social engineering, as mentioned, cloud-based security breaches, and IoT, or the Internet of Things. Brokers can help their clients stay ahead of these risks by providing education and resources in emerging cyber threats, as well as recommending vendors and consultants who specialize in these areas. I do want to mention, Richie, that a lot of these national cybersecurity firms do publish annual reports on emerging threats and, and often give some really basic and free uh, advice. Okay, great. Uh, and here's the last one that someone submitted ahead of time. Uh, Haley, I'll give this one to you. How do we submit business? Yeah, it is super easy to submit business to us. Um, you can grab the application to download off our website, um, and that's uh, the Distinguish website. And once it's completed, it can be emailed to cyber at distinguish.com. That's our general inbox for cyber. Um, and if you have any questions along the way, feel free to reach out to Alex or myself. Okay, great. All right, here's a question that someone in the audience just sent in. Um, when a community association has a property manager that handles association accounting, does the distinguished product also cover the manager or just the condominium association? And then how do we follow up to that is how do we convince the association to purchase this coverage? Haley, do you want to? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can do the first part, and I'd love to. Yeah, not off onto you after that, Alex. But uh, yeah, I can tell you right now that uh, we are looking to cover the property manager or the community manager for the community associations. Um, so yeah, they'll have their own specific endorsement. They'll be specifically named. Um, I know that's um, you know industry standard, and that's what you guys are looking for. So we're happy to be able to provide that. Yeah. And the second part of that, Ricky, so so I understand is is how do you convince them right to purchase the cybersecurity, right? Yeah, um, that's the question. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, again, relating to them and, and letting them know that that they're not immune. Even these smaller associations, you know, 25, um, 25 homes, 25 doors, uh, they, 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 we do see uh, claims that come in. Cybersecurity um, criminals don't care how small your account is or how small your association is. They're, they're going to go after you. So relating to them again and, and providing them real life claim examples of, of associations, you know, varying from, again, a couple doors to all the way to, you know, 5,000 units. You can you can find information that out there and we're happy to help you find that info if needed. Great. Uh, so we don't have any other audience questions now. The, uh, the panel's here if anyone wants to uh, submit some directly into, uh, you just click towards the bottom of the screen, you should see a place uh, that says Q&A and uh, put in a question. All 
All right, well, if there are no other questions, we'll, we'll move along, but you, know, you, should, you should feel free to send questions in at any time to myself, to Haley, to Alex. Um, but at this point, I'm gonna ask both you, Haley, and you, Alex, what's the final piece of advice you'd like to give the audience? Let's, let's start with you, Haley. Yeah, so, you know, nobody is immune to cyber attacks. You know, even if you think you've got the best antivirus software, um, or you think, oh, my business is too small to even be targeted. Um, you know, cyber criminals, they continue to evolve. They find ways around even the most advanced antivirus software. Um, you know, and small businesses are even, you know, they're at the greatest risk of actually succumbing to these cyber attacks because they don't have the financial means to respond to a cyber loss on, loss on their own. So that's why having a, you know, a cyber liability policy in place is really important. That's great. Actually, before we get to Alex's piece of advice, we had actually a couple of questions come in. The first was, uh, do you have brochures? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got, we've got highlight sheets, um, we've got, um, you know, a list of our coverage enhancements, um, you know, a lot of different things to help you sell the product. Um, if you want to, you know, reach out to me after this, you know, I, I'd be happy to get in touch with you and, uh, you know, get you a list of all of our uh, highlight sheets and information. Great. Okay. And, and a lot of that can also be found on the Distinguished website. Um, but yeah, Haley, Haley can help direct if you don't see it obvious. Uh, here's another question from the audience. Do smaller businesses need cyber? Yes, they do. Uh, and I'll jump in, Haley. Yeah, because kind of as Haley mentioned, um, you know, these cyber criminals don't care that, you know, you you are a small mom and pop store on the, on the, on the corner. They're looking at everything. I mean, they they there it's a game of numbers for them how how many um targets they can go after and and they go after you and they'll and they'll lock out your system so that you can't access you can't accept payments until you pay in the bitcoin or some other you know um type of digital currency um so yeah i, I we see we've seen it we've seen claims come in and we'll continue to see claims come in for these smaller businesses yep okay uh here's another one from the audience does beasley have a max revenue threshold you know, um, you know, we're we're typically looking at accounts under um, 40 million, um, but you know, that's definitely not to say that we couldn't look at anything above that. Um, we'd be happy to look at them at a case by case basis. Um, if they're over 40 million, um, we just may you know may need a little bit more information. It may take you know a little bit longer to get it back to you. Um, but no, I mean, we're really you know we're willing to look at anything really for Sauber. Okay, great. Uh, Haley, here's a question to you. It says, Haley, you mentioned that we can write both tech e and and cyber. Do you write this on a combined form? Oh, uh, sorry, no. No, this was this was just my uh, previous experience when I when I worked for a Lloyd's MGA. I, I did do tech, uh, cyber, miscellaneous E&O. Um, but no, for um, I distinguished. Um, it's just a cyber. It's a cyber monolon uh, product, and there there are also other products. But no, unfortunately, it's not it's not uh, E&O and uh, yeah, tech. It's a cyber product. Okay. Uh, then someone says, "Sorry if I missed this question." What is the commission paid and is it agency bill? Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's agency bill only. Um, you know, we work we work with you guys. We we don't go direct to the insured. Um, and you know, it, it depends on you know the agency. Um, but you know, it's usually you know about a good ten percent. So. Okay. Uh, another question from the audience. I was unable to find a cyber application for a restaurant for our insured. Could you kindly send me one? So that's in the questions, and so. Uh, the panel will get these questions and we'll send one out to you rather than reveal the name of the, the uh, agent. Um, does your program run reports on clients' websites? Example to see if they have holes in it. So this is real. Yeah, no, no, we're we're not we're not looking, you know, to audit it. We've we've got our application that you know asks everything that we need. Um, so we're not going to need anything additional um, after we get that application back from you. Yeah, that's a that's a good question, and that's kind of yeah. like where I would say, you know, educating your client and letting them know, you know, ahead of time, like maybe we should seek the professional guidance of a, you know, cybersecurity firm. There's so many out there, and there's there's strong competition that they're often not as pricey as you may think. Right, and and you can also always reach out to the Beasley breach response team. Um, you know, they can help you if you think that you know you might be vulnerable somewhere. Um, you know, definitely reach out to them, and they can walk you through it. Okay, and. It I'm not quite sure if I have this question right. I'm going to try to paraphrase it. We, we talked about restaurants and hotels and community associations. So these are, what other categories uh, does Beasley in, insure? Or are those the only classes of business that we, that we write right now? 
Yeah, at, at this time, it is um, hotels, restaurants, and community associations. So that's what we're writing cyber for at this time. So. All right, and let's see. Can you underwrite off of other carriers' applications initially, then, quote, subject to receipt of your own application? You know, I mean, we, we can. Uh, obviously, we prefer our own application. Um, but, you know, if, if it has enough information, we can at least give you a premium indication. So I understand the, the want to not to want to fill out, you know, 100 different applications. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if it has what we need on it and uh, revenues is the most important thing, um, then we could definitely take a look at it for you. Okay, those are all the questions we've had submitted up to this point, which is good because we're running up to time. Haley, you gave a piece of advice. Alex, do you have a piece of advice to give the audience? Sure, I don't want to continue on this theme, but I, I got to really drive it home. So, I, you know, I don't want to seem too pessimistic or to continue to instill fear in everyone who's, who's tuning in, but the harsh reality is that it's often only a matter of time before you're hacked, um, you know, on a, on a personal level. I've several times had my identity stolen I, I i'm sure i've had tried my my breach you know my system several times and the same the same for for your businesses you know as haley mentioned these cyber criminals are ever evolving and they're looking at ways to elude your detection uh their full-time job is is stealing your money and, and they're quite quite good able to turn into a, a very fruitful career of, of crime so protecting your clients with a, a policy that will stand the test of an attack and suggest to them to seek the professional guidance of a cybersecurity professional before an incident occurs is, is really the best thing you could do. That's good advice. All right, if you enjoyed today's webinar, stay up to date on our latest events by following us on social media, particularly LinkedIn. Uh, we post about insurance market insights and industry news, and you'll learn about our latest free webinars, eBooks, and case studies. And as a matter of fact, everyone who attended today's webinar will get a copy of the slides, answers to the questions, and uh, we'll, uh, try to answer the questions that also came in online during this and, and uh, write those out to send to you also. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us for today's webinar and to our panelists, Haley Cagle and Alex Montclair for sharing their valuable insights. We hope that you found this information useful and helpful. Remember our underwriters are available to answer any follow-up questions. Both Haley and Alex are at your disposal. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And we hope to see you at our next webinar. Thanks a lot, Thank everybody. You. Thank Bye -bye. you, guys.